Hello, my name is Ivan Bristow, and in this short video, I'm going to show you a way to grade the severity of onychomycosis in clinic using this simple nail assessment tool known as the Onychomycosis Severity Index, or the OSI. When you look at various fungal nail treatments and the literature, they often talk about onychomycosis being graded as mild, moderate and severe. But what does this actually mean? Well, this tool will help you to understand that, but also can be very useful when you're undertaking any fungal nail infection treatments in clinic. The OSI is uh, taken from a paper published in the Archives of Dermatology in 2011, and this is a well-respected American journal. The uh, paper itself is free online where you can read it in full, and I'll give you the link to this paper at the end of this presentation. So fungal toenail infection or onychomycosis, put this word into Google and you'll come up with all these glorious pictures of fungal toenails. And uh, as a clinician, we're often faced with patients coming into clinic who are looking for a treatment to rid themselves of their ugly toenails. And as a clinician, I think it's important to ensure that what we're doing for our patients if we do treat these nails is actually improving their nail condition. And we can actually demonstrate that through some means. So the first question is, if we're going to measure this improvement, why bother? The OSI is a simple clinical tool to assess the progress of any fungal nail treatment as an adjunct to mycological testing. And what this very simple system does at each visit, it can give you a clinical score to which you can measure against previous treatments to see if there's any improvement or deterioration. Traditionally, success in fungal nail research is shown by the presence of fungus or not and we call that a mycological cure so you may be testing the nail at the start using mycological testing kits or sending it to the laboratory and you'll find that it's positive but what you're hoping for is a negative result at the end of treatment and that is what is known as the mycological cure so the fungus was there but following treatment it's no longer there when patients come into clinic Often this is not their concern. They're not worried about whether the fungus is in there or not. They want their nails to look better. And in many research studies, when we measure improvement in nails, they also look at the appearance of the nail and whether there's an improvement in the appearance of the nail. And if at the end of the treatment, for example, the nail looks absolutely perfect, we call that a clinical cure. So the OSI that I'm talking about here is a visual method of assessing nails, which can help in uh, finding out whether you think the patient is moving towards a clinical cure. So how does the OSI work? Well, it's very, very simple, really. The nail is assessed for three features, which I've imaginatively titled A to C. And for each of these parameters, there's an individual score attached to it. And the three features are the percentage area of the nail affected, which is point A. Then point B is the proximity to the nail matrix and point C is additional features. We'll talk through each of these in a moment, but essentially by coming up with these three scores, you then plug them into a very simple equation, which can give you the OSI score for that particular nail for that particular visit. So let's look at the first feature and feature A is the percentage of the nail plate involved. So with the patient and their nail sat in front of you in clinic, basically what you do is you look at the amount of diseased nail and you estimate what is the total area of that nail which is affected. If we look at the toenail on the right here, I'm just going to draw a rough line to give you a clearer outline of where the diseased nail sits. For example here, I would say this is roughly about 30% of the total area of the nail plate. So looking down the chart, as you can see here, 30% sits between 26 and 50%. And on that basis, you would say that that would score three. So effectively, that would be your first feature score, A equals three. So for feature B, what we need to do there is to measure the proximity of the infection to the matrix. So the closer to the matrix, the higher the score. And uh, what this system actually does, it just splits the nail into roughly quarters, one, two, three, four, as you can see, with the lunula, which is actually 
the nail matrix itself scoring five. So to whatever level the infection sits in, you would score it accordingly. So if I just draw a bit of an imaginary mycosis here, you can see that if there was a bit of mycosis here, that would score one. Any further down, that could score two into three into four and so on. So really just to judge exactly how far down the nail the infection is, that gives you your B score. So we have our scores for A and B. The final part of the calculation is to just calculate feature C. And what you have to do is ask if any of the features are present in the nail that you're treating. Firstly, is there any subungal hyperkeratosis present, which is greater than two millimeters in thickness? And this is something you could easily measure just by uh, looking at the end of the nail and putting a, a little tape across it just to see how thick that, that is. The other two features to ask if are present, subungal patch and a nail streak. And we'll talk about those in a moment and define what they are. But essentially, uh, the key thing to remember here is if any one of these or more of them are present, the score is 10 maximum. If none of them are present, then it's not. It's an either or. Any one or more scores 10, none of these score zero. So just to define those two terms, a fungal streak is a long, thin stripe of uh, fungus, some people refer to it as nail spikes, which runs proximally from the nail edge towards the matrix. And you commonly see this in early onychomycosis. The second term is a fungal patch. Now the patch is an area of fungal infection under the nail, which isn't continuous within the free edge. So it's best described like an island of fungus in the sea of the nail plate. It's an entirely isolated area of fungal infection. The presence of either or both of these generally indicates a poorer prognosis, but as we discussed, if either or both of these are present, that would score 10 points. So we get to the point, how do we calculate our OSI score? Very, very simply, you take your three scores, as we can see here. So you multiply your feature A score by your feature B score, then add 10 points if any of the three features the C are present and that will give you your final OSI score. The total amount available or the range that's available from this score is 0 to 35 points. So how do we interpret that score between 0 and 35 points? Well the authors of this paper suggest that if you've got a score anywhere between 1 and 5 you can classify that as a very mild onychomycosis. 6 to 15 points moderate onychomycosis then 16 to 35 is what we term severe onychomycosis. And each time the patient comes to visit you can record the scores for the nails and that will give you a an objective score, if you like, of how the nail is improving visually at each appointment. And it's important just to remember that why do we need to know whether it's mild, moderate or severe? Generally speaking, if you're going to use oral or topical antifungal agents, um, it is said that obviously the more severe the infection, the longer the time it takes to clear. So this is also an objective marker to which to advise your patients whether it's going to be a relatively short haul or a long haul to curing that fungal nail. Okay, so we've talked about the theory. Let's uh, have a look at it in practice and do a little bit of example here as to how you might score a nail. And as they say on Blue Peter, well, they used to, uh, here's one I prepared earlier. And uh, this is an example of a fungal nail that we're just gonna run through and see if we can come up with an OSI score for this particular patient. First of all, what we need to do is to get a percentage score for the amount of nail involvement. And uh, you may look at this and come up with a figure, and I'll look at this and come up with a figure. But I suspect, and I would suggest, that this is probably no more than 25% of the nail of the area infected, probably somewhere about 20 to 25%. And on that basis, what I would suggest then, if it is somewhere between 20 to 25%, I would score this as the total area affected being um, two points, that is in the grade 11 to 25% of the nail plate affected. So that would be 
times 2 in your first score for feature A. So uh, from there, we have our first score. We would go on to the second scoring point, which is feature B, and to assess its proximity to the matrix. So if we remember, the nails split up into quarters with the lunula or the matrix itself scoring five, but one, two, three, four, five. How does that fit with our particular patient? Well, let's have a look. I would say that is very close to the lunula, but probably not quite in the lunula or into the uh, nail matrix itself. So I would score that at feature B being equal to four. So we have our first two scores, A equals two and B equals four. The final uh, look for any presence of nail streak patch or some subungual hyperkeratosis. Remember, a fungal streak is a spike of nail which uh, moves pr proximally from the free edge down towards the nail matrix, and a fungal patch is an isolated area of infection which is not continuous with the free nail edge but sits under the nail plate, rather like an island in a sea of nail. So what do we see here? Well, the first thing I'd say is there's definitely subungal hyperkeratosis, but you'll have to take my word that that is more than two millimeters thick. You'd need to look down on the nail to measure that, but it's more than two millimeters thick. On top of that, there are also uh, three nail spikes that I can see. But remember, you only need one or more of any of these features to score the maximum score of 10. If none of these were present, it would be a score of zero. So for that, I'd give it a score of 10. And so your C feature is scored at that number. So to calculate the OSI score for this particular patient and their nail, we would take the feature A score, multiply it by the feature B score, and then add the C score to come up with the OSI for this particular patient. So as you can see here, if we plug the numbers in from our patient into this uh, simple equation, we come up with an OSI score of 18. So what we need to do is to see where that sits to classify the severity of the nail infection. Well, according to this interpretation, that this will be classified as severe onychomycosis. So you could advise the patient that uh, whatever you're going to be doing for this nail may take longer to clear than if it were, say, mild or moderate. So you're probably wondering how, in the end, I treated this uh, particular patient with the fungal nail infection. Um, as the OSI score dictated, this was a severe infection, so I knew it was going to be tough to treat. Having a discussion with the patient and looking at the various options, I decided to use ClearNail, which is a simple micro drilling technique into the nail itself, where small holes are made into the diseased area of the nails. This allows the patient then to make a regular application of an antifungal solution, such as tibinavin spray, and pictorially I'll just put those holes into the nail. There we are, that's all I did. And the patient was then sent away for eight weeks to apply that on a regular basis, in fact daily I suggested, and uh, we reassessed then at eight weeks. So this is what the nail looked like after eight weeks of daily tibinafin spray. You can see that the top surface of the nail, the dorsal lamina, has just completely disintegrated. The antifungal solution has cleared out most of the fungal infection, you can see the nail has gone back to a much paler colour with very little brown discoloration, which indicated to me that this nail was actually improving. Although at this point, if you were to run the OSI score, you would probably come up with a score very similar to the, uh, to the original scoring as being severe onychomycosis. On this basis, I suggested to the patient then that they continue to use the spray for another four weeks and treat the skin at the same time. And uh, subsequently, I saw them for two appointments after that. And in the next slide, you'll see what the outcome was. So at the end of the treatment, this was the uh, clinical picture. And if you run the OSI score, you will find that this uh, would actually be a zero. So we can confidently say this is a clinical cure. 
Not that I needed to tell the patient that because they could clearly see the improvement in their nail and they were very happy. Of course, any advice to the patient subsequently would be about preventing reinfection of the skin around the nail and on the foot and to keep the infection under control with regular applications of antifungal cream to the skin. Otherwise, the nail could very soon get reinfected if there was heavier infection on the skin itself. So just to summarize, we've talked about the onychomycosis severity index and how to calculate it. This is a table taken from the original paper. And you can see here the uh, three areas, feature A, feature B, and feature C, and it tells you how it's calculated. If you wish to read the whole paper, uh, it's available. And the link is just there, as you can see at the bottom. And this was published in 2011 in the Archives of Dermatology. And it's perfectly uh, useful to be in clinic. And if you're regularly treating fungal nails, it can be a, a bonus and also a way to audit your success rate with whatever fungal treatment that you happen to be using. I'd just like to say thank you for listening. And if you're interested to learn more about a five minute fungal nail diagnostic kit, which you can use in clinic, please visit the website www.5minutefungus.com. Thank you.